There we go. All right. Um, so we are going to do 11.3, continuing on with areas of kites and rhombuses today. And those two shapes actually have the same area formula, so that's kind of nice. Um, so just so you know what's coming, our homework assignment for today is going to be like an actual worksheet, um, kind of like we've done a couple of those in the past where you then either take pictures of your work or you... Um, put it into a Google Doc or a um, PDF, whatever you would like to use to format your work and upload pictures and things like that to the assignment. Um, you can print off the worksheet if you want to um, and do it on there, or you can do it on your own notebook paper. The choice is yours. Or if you're really into typing math, you can always type on it or use some kind of PDF editor like Kami or something like that to edit, uh, whatever you would like to use. But anyway, that's what's coming at us. Um, oh, no worries. We are just getting started with the new learning. OK, so go ahead and grab your notes. And I'm going to full size this thing. OK. So this is still 11.3 but it's a continuation this time, area of kites and rhombuses. It's interesting the different plurals of rhombus, like some places say rhombi and some places like IXL has a section called area of rhombuses. So I don't exactly know which one's technically correct I would trust IXL, but anyways, um, the area formula for both of these is the same. It's diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two. So if you multiply the lengths of the diagonals and then divide them by two, you get the area of a kite or of a rhombus. So if we're looking at a rhombus, just remembering some rhombus properties and some kite properties here real quick. First off, we know on a rhombus, all four sides are the same. On a kite, we know that uh, adjacent sides like this are the same, and then the two longer sides down here are the same. We also know on a rhombus and on a kite, that the diagonals meet at 90 degree angles. They're perpendicular. So notice how it creates a bunch of little right triangles. That's gonna become important to us uh, because sometimes the dimensions aren't all going to be given to us. We also know on a rhombus that the diagonals cut each other in half because it's also a parallelogram and that's true for parallelograms. So that means that these two little pieces are equal and these two little pieces are equal. On a kite, we know that that only happens for this diagonal. These two pieces are equal, these two are not. Okay, so when we're talking diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two, that means we're talking this length, this whole distance here from corner to corner, multiplied by the distance here from corner to corner and divided by two. Same idea down here. We want this distance multiplied by this distance and then divided by two. Okay, so that was kind of a review of what we know about kites and rhombuses. 
Now let's take a look at some examples here. We're going to look at some easier to work with examples, and then we're going to do some examples that involve using things like the Pythagorean theorem. So first one. Take a rhombus here. And we might be told that this distance here is 6, and this distance here is 8. And we want to find the area. Okay. Well, we want to take diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. So the first thing we have to do, oh, and we might also be told, you know, that this is a rhombus uh, by putting all four sides equal to each other. Um, okay. So we want to find diagonal 1 and diagonal 2. So part of my diagonal Let's call this DB is diagonal 1 or something like that. So if that's the case, if this part of the diagonal is 8, what's the length of the whole diagonal going to be? What do we think? Sixteen. Yeah. Because if this is 8, then this would also be 8. And 8 plus 8 is 16. And then we'll call this other one AC. That'll be diagonal 2. What's the length of diagonal 2? 12. Yeah, because if this is 6, then this is also 6. And 6 and 6 is 12. Okay. So now we have our diagonals, and we know that area is diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2, which is 16 times 12 divided by 2, which is something we would probably stick into a calculator. 96. And it would be square units. OK. So that's kind of the simple case there, where we are given um, both of our essentially both of our diagonals. We just have to, you know, all we had to do there was go, okay, 8 plus 8, that's 16. 6 plus 6, that's 12. Those are my full diagonal lengths, and we're done, pretty much. So we can multiply them and divide by 2. So that's the simpler case. The leveling it up slightly case is what we're going to look at next. So if we take this to the next level here, example number two. Um, we got our diagonals. And we know it's a rhombus because all the sides are the same. And this time we are going to be told that, let's say, this side is 13. That one is 5. And we want to find the area. Okay, so this one is a rhombus despite it being drawn in an orientation that kind of looks like a kite because we know all four sides are the same. That's what's telling us here that this is a rhombus.
Okay. So if this is a rhombus, then the first thing we know, we can take this one, this part of the diagonal that's five, and know that this one is also five. So one of our diagonals, DB, we'll say that that's diagonal one again, five plus five, which is 10. The second diagonal though, AC, we don't really know. We don't know yet because I don't know either of these measures. But if I look at this as though we've just got this little right triangle going on here, we notice this is 5 and this is 13, and we're missing one side of our right triangle. So what can we do when we're missing one side of a right triangle? And remember what we can use? There was a theorem. And it started with a P. Yes, Pythagorean or something. That is it, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and if you can remember the A squared plus B squared equals C squared part, that'll help. Uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared is what we are going to use here. Now, I'm just gonna label this as like some missing side X. So out of five X and 13, which one's gonna be C? That's the important part. Which one's gonna be C? 13, yeah, the hypotenuse, exactly. That one's gonna be C. So we're gonna go X squared plus five squared equals 13 squared. And now we get to solve for X. So five squared is 25, 13 squared is 169. Then we subtract 25 from both sides. So we get X squared equals 144. Then we take the square root of both sides and we get X equals 12. Okay, so now we know that this is 12, so then this must also be 12. So my other diagonal, AC, is 12 plus 12, which is 24. And then we can find the area. So that would be 10 times 24 divided by two, which if you put into a calculator or do in your head, is 120 square units. Okay, so that's gonna be our like slightly more difficult version today where you get to do the Pythagorean theorem to find part of your missing diagonal. Any questions on either of those two? Any numbers we're not sure where they came from? Steps we're not sure how we did them. Okay, give everyone a moment to finish writing and then we'll do some with kites. Which will work pretty much the same way just occasionally there's a few different considerations with a kite.
Okay, so let's look at some kite ones. I think we still got enough room on here for one more. Kind of separate these a little. Third one, this time kite. So we'll do like the simple case of the kite and then we'll do the slightly less simple case of the kite. Okay, so we might be given something like this and asked to find the area of the kite. All right, so diagonal one, let's say this one is diagonal one. Well, then that would just be two plus five, which is seven. And then we'll say this one is diagonal two. And the kite thing that we have to remember for diagonal two is that this would also be three. So diagonal two would be three plus three, which is six. So then the area is still just diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two which is six times seven divided by two, which is 21 square units. Okay. So that's the simpler case for the kite. Very simple, or very simple, very similar to the simpler case for the uh, rhombus. And then the more difficult version of the kite will be very similar to the more difficult version for the rhombus. Um, so let's do one of those. Okay. So let's take a kite. And here's my diagonals. And we will say that this side length is 10. This one is 6. Uh, and we'll say that this is 14. Okay. So there's our picture. And looking at this one, there's a couple different things we have to do here. We're going to have to do the Pythagorean theorem twice. Uh, so first of all, we can notice that this one right here is 6. So that means this one is also 6. So one of our diagonals is already taken care of. We know that this diagonal here, D1, is 6 plus 6, which is 12. So that's going to help us out to start. Problem is, I don't know either of these pieces of my other diagonal. And they're not going to be the same as each other. This one is shorter than this one. So we're going to be dealing with, basically, we've got two right triangles going on here. And we're looking for a missing side. So what I would do first here is label this like A or something like that. The nice thing is, um, when you do the Pythagorean theorem with these sorts of problems, is that you're usually going to be solving for a missing leg, not the hypotenuse. Actually, pretty much exclusively, you're going to be solving for a missing leg and not the hypotenuse. Um, since the parts of the diagonal will always be legs of these right triangles. 
Anyways, um, so for this one, if I'm just looking at this little right triangle here and we're doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, c is going to be 10, 6 is going to be b. So we'll go a squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. So then 10 or 6 squared is 36, not squared again. Uh, 10 squared is 100 minus 36 on both sides. We get a squared equals 64. Then we take the square root on both sides and we get a is 8. So that means that this length here is going to be 8. Okay, so that's finding that first missing little bit of the diagonal. So diagonal 2 is going to be 8 plus something. Then I need to find this other part of the diagonal using this right triangle here. So we're going to do the same exact thing. I'm just going to call this one B, since that'll make things, you know, a little bit easier notation-wise. We're still doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared again. But this time, it's going to be 6 squared plus b squared equals 14 squared. So it's the same idea, same exact kind of problem as we were doing here, just using 14 as our hypotenuse instead. And 14 squared is 196, but yep, okay. So then 36, or sorry, 6 squared is 36. 14 squared is 196 minus 36 on both sides we get that b squared is 160. Taking the square root of both sides, we get that b, uh, this one is going to be a decimal. Square root of 160 is approximately 12 point, um, four nine. Since it's not my final answer, I'm going to keep a few more decimal places here. So 8 plus 12.649, which gives me 20.649 for my second diagonal. Okay, so now we have diagonal 1 and diagonal 2. So now my last step, area... Diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. So 12 times 20.649 divided by 2. Into the calculator. We get 123.894. So if I was rounding this to the nearest tenth, it would be 123.9 square units. Okay. Any questions from that one? Any numbers we're not sure where they came from or anything like that? Okay. Then I'm going to have you guys try a couple here. We'll start with the rhombus. And we'll go, this one is 10, this is 7, 
And I'd like you to find the area. And then the second one, we'll do a kite. That should be enough info, yeah? Yep, okay. Um, there you go. Find the area of both of those. As we go, I'll give little hints and things like that. When you think you've got them, type done in the chat. And this is supposed to be a seven. Well, first one, you're on the right track. If one of your diagonals is 10 plus 10 and the other one is 7 plus 7. And then if you set up 20 times 14 divided by 2, you're on the right track. All right, Jade's got both of them. Ashton's got them. Nice. So what would you get for number 1 if you're done? One forty. Awesome. That is what I got as well. So if you got 140 on the first one, you're good to go. On the second one, what did we get for this little part of the diagonal here? Six, yeah. That is what we should get there. Okay, let's know it's 140 squared units. Yes, that is technically correct. 140 square units. Um. Yeah, so for this one, using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we'd have a squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. Subtracting 64 on both sides, we get a squared equals 36. So a is 6. So then once we got 6 there, this would also be 6. So one of our diagonals would be 8 plus 12. The other one would be 6 plus 6. So we get 20 and 12. So then the area, 20 times 12 divided by 2. Or 120 square units. So if that's what you got, you are correct. 
And that's pretty much as difficult as these um, rhombus and kite ones get. Give everyone a moment to finish writing there. And we are almost done. Okay, um, so before we get to the homework, I am curious, uh, in the poll section, this is also part of attendance, so make sure you let me know that you are here by voting. On a scale of one to five, how do we feel about these area problems? So one, I need a lot of help. Two, I could probably just use some more examples. Three, I probably just need to try some more of these on my own. Four and five, this is pretty easy for me. What are we feeling? You're on a phone, you can't vote. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Okay, looks like we're mostly, we got a peek at the threes. Anyone else voting? Heard responses from 15 of us so far. I know there's more than that out there. You got 30 more seconds to cast your vote or let me know in the chat if you're having a hard time voting. Okay. So based on that, what I think I'll do is I will post the assignment, but then if there's people that would like more examples or more help with any of this, uh, or if there's particular problems on the assignment that you want help with right from the get-go, stick around and we can go over as many as you guys would like to go over. Um, okay, thanks Savannah. Um, and then from there, we can kind of, you know, those who want to go and work on their own can. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to post the assignment here. Okay. So you might have to refresh the page in Google Classroom, but here's our assignment for today. So click on the worksheet. Um, and it says, for the first three, finding the area of each rhombus, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Um, find the area of each kite for these next couple. And then we have, these ones are a little, this one's a little bit harder, number eight. It's a good challenge. Uh, and then number nine is another one that's um, not super terrible. They give you the lengths of the diagonals. And then the second page is some more um, area of parallelograms and triangles. So for um, the kind of problems that we were working on yesterday, I wanted to get us some more practice. That's just a little bit more on paper kind of stuff um, for those of us that are not huge fans of IXL. So... Uh, some of these, like seven and eight, are the easier kind of our triangle problems from yesterday. Some of these will involve using like the Pythagorean theorem to find the height, like five and six. And some of these, like one and two, will involve using um, right triangle, like sine, cosine, tangent to find the height. And remembering some triangle properties. Um, so do your best on all of these problems. You can always ask questions in class either uh, in this Google Meet um, in a little bit here, or you can ask questions in office hours tomorrow, or you can bring questions with you to class tomorrow if you have questions. Um, but at this point, 
If you would like to go and work on your own, you are free to go. There will be an exit ticket in a little bit. Uh, if you would like more examples or help with anything, you can stick around and I'm happy to show more examples or work through some of the problems on the homework with you.